Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not sure why they gave up. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are enjoying Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. If you were able to pre-release, I hope you had a fantastic time. But we're talking about a very fun deck today. Before we jump into that, I just want to remind you, please subscribe to the channel. Not just as it, that help us out, obviously. It's a really big help, especially for a smaller channel like us. But on top of that, you're entered to win a free draft booster box of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty on February 23rd. We're gonna be giving that away. There are multiple ways to enter. Subscribing is only one of multiple, so please do check out the video on our homepage. We also have an article over on our website at itresolvesmtg.com. It gives you all the details, links, and everything like that. But let's talk about today's deck, guys. This is uh, gonna trigger some people if I, if I have to guess. Uh, this is Hello Good Games list. Let me first clarify that. Hello Good Game put this together. Uh, I was checking out his videos on Neon Dynasty uh, just this morning, in fact, and stumbled upon this, and my goodness, uh, did I fall in love immediately. I think this is one of the coolest decks Hello Good Game has ever put together. So first and foremost, thank you, uh, Good Game, for, for sharing this over on Aether Hub and releasing this video, because this is a super sick one. Uh, the idea um, is to utilize the Afrit Flame Painter. Now, this we've had since Strixhaven. It's not a new card, but... Uh, the idea is to utilize this uh, to play some very, very large spells or some just very powerful spells. Uh, first and foremost, we got Alchemist Gambit. Now, this is a three of. It's not the full four, but uh, the idea is we could theoretically take extra turns and just win the game kind of on the spot, uh, which is kind of insane. We're going to see if that works out. But we also have things like Magma Opus or Seagate Restoration, both of which are obviously very big spells on their own, right? Uh, now, for some mid-range kind of stuff, just to kind of control the game, but also get some replayability, we do have Prismari Command. Uh, this is just a nice little target, honestly. It's a great card. And then worst case scenario, we've got, of course, Otherworldly Gaze. But the idea is essentially to, in the early turns of the game, kind of be able to get a nice spell pierce off, get some control elements out, but also utilize things like the Ogre Head Helm, which if it deals combat damage to a player or if the uh, equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you can sacrifice it. And then if you do, uh, you discard your hand and then draw three cards. Uh, crucially, that's gonna hopefully get some of these big spells into the graveyard, uh, which we can then of course later play with the Afrit Flame Painter. Uh, that's kind of the main goal. We do have Mind Link Mech in here as well. This is a three mana 4-3 with flying through one, which is insane. Uh, whenever it becomes screwed for the first time each turn, uh, until the end of the turn, it becomes a copy of target non-legendary creature that you crewed it with. Uh, so the idea is to crew it with this, uh, except it's a 4-3. It's a vehicle artifact in addition to its other types, and it has flying which basically provides not only more power, double striking power to the fl uh, the Flame Painter here, but it also gives it a lot more evasion with that flying ability that's gonna make it very difficult to block, which is awesome because then it's gonna trigger <laughs> uh, and we're gonna be able to do some crazy stuff. So I'm really excited to see if we can get that to work. Uh, some other cards that we do have in here though, Fable of uh, the Mirror Breaker, Nice little callback to Kiki Jiki. On the uh, first uh, first saga, we've got create a 2-2 Goblin Shaman creature with whenever it attacks, create a treasure token. Kind of like a mini Goldspan Dragon. It's going to give us a little extra mana, do what we need it to do. Uh, on two, you can discard up to two cards if you do draw that many cards. Again, kind of filling up our graveyard for that incoming Flame Painter if we can get there. And then, of course, on three, you exile it. And instead, you get a 2-2 uh, Reflection of Kiki Jiki, which you can pay one, tap it, create a token, that's a copy of another target non-legendary creature you control, except it has haste, and then you sacrifice it at the beginning of the end step. The idea, of course, to get extra flame painters so we can just go crazy with this list. Uh, some other things to note here, that Magma Opus, we can discard it early on just to create a treasure token that'll hopefully ramp us, but also fill up our yard with Magma Opus that we can then use for the Efreet. So we've got a lot of really awesome synergies here that I cannot wait to try out. 
Now, in the land slot, some, some things that we should note here. We have got two of both the Soaring City as well as the Crucible of Defiance, both of which are very interesting and I do really like quite a lot. Uh, we also have three Access Tunnel, and this is going to give Unblockable to the Ifrit Flame Painter, which obviously just guarantees that if they don't have a removal spell, we're going to get in for the damage. We're going to be able to uh, hit some of these big spells. So... We'll see how this goes. It's going to be an interesting one, guys. Uh, again, I just want to say a huge shout out to Hello Good Game, who I will link down below. Obviously, a much bigger channel than we are, but does some amazing deck techs and puts some amazing stuff together. Please go check him out. Uh, and again, credit where credit's due. He put this awesome list together. Some of you guys are going to hate this. I know a lot of you are probably tired of his it turns. I get it. But you know what? We got to play it. Come on. We got to try it. So let's go ahead. Let's jump into game one. Let's see how we do. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. This is a bit of a slower hand, just in the sense that we don't have any of like our one or two drop kind of stuff going on. But we do have a mind link mech and the Prismari command uh, with Teferi kind of coming on later on. So we'll see what we can do here. Um, we can ditch the Seagate Restoration. Again, that's always an option for us with the Prismari command. So that way we can get it out later with that uh, that Afrit Flame Painter. So we'll see what we end up doing. Looks like the opponent's taking a mulligan. Uh, guys, as we're kind of waiting to jump into this game, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to everybody who has been supporting the channel recently. It is amazing to see the numbers going up and seeing all of you guys coming out in stride. Uh, it's absolutely amazing and such, such supportive individuals. So thank you guys so much. I've met more awesome people just recently. Uh, <laughs> than like as in in the last like month or so than I think I ever have in my life and it's absolutely phenomenal so thank you all so much for just being amazing it's it's the best thing in the world uh so we do have the prismari command as an option for us um or we can play that mind link mech um I think we go the mind link mech route because we do have the fleet frame flame painter wow that's hard to say uh, coming down next turn off of the Seagate Restoration, which we can crew immediately. Crucially, though, we really don't have anything in the graveyard. <laughs> uh, and so we may have to kind of play around here, but let's see what we can do. Yep. Uh, so what we can do is kind of take a turn. Ooh, oh, that's so good. Um, okay, that's really, really good. Uh, all right, well... <laughs> Let's see how we want to do this then. Um, we have one mana available, which is important to note. Um, I think we're going to go this route. So we're going to deal two damage. We're going to draw two and discard two. Let's deal the two here. Uh, they can exile this and bring it back, but they have to discard a card in that process. Um, and I'm kind of curious to see if they do. They also lose the counter in the process. So yeah, they are going to. That's fine. I guess we could have waited until their turn. Wow. Uh, interesting. I think we throw these two back. Uh, we can replay this, so that's not really a problem for us. Yeah, I guess we should have waited until their turn, but that's okay. One thing to note, guys, I do want to just point out, uh, we are learning this deck, and so I'm not going to play it perfectly. Hello Good Game did, a, did an amazing job in his video with this list, uh, but I've, I've practiced once with it, so... Uh, we got some learning to do. The cool thing is, though, we're about to get some replayability out of this. So let's do this. I love the fact that the uh, Flame Painter has Double Strike. It's so sick. All right, let's crew. Yep. So it becomes the target of this. <laughs> or a copy of that, excuse me. And then we get an attack in, double strike two, so we get <laughs> eight damage in, and we get to copy a bunch of stuff. Um, all of these are good options, really. I think we Seagate first. <clears throat> so we Seagate first, and then we Prismari command, so we can throw more stuff into the graveyard and hopefully have some more hits later. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> That's helpful. Um, all right, so we... <laughs> so ridiculous. All right, so let's do this. Uh, we're going to deal two damage. I wish we could destroy enchantments, but... And then we're going to do this. Let's kill this, and we'll draw two. And discard two. Uh, definitely this. 
Uh, what's the other thing we need to discard here, though? It's actually a bit tricky because, uh, I guess it's a... I mean, the mech is really good. Hmm. I think we'll go mech. Like, chances are that game's... This game's not going to go that long, in my opinion. Um, they're either going to swing in and really annihilate us here, or we're going to take them out with the uh, Alchemist Gambit. So, we'll see. They are going to get aggressive here. I mean, it makes sense. This really can't block the, the Flame Painter, and... All right, they didn't have anything. Um, <laughs> yeah. So... We go this route. <laughs> uh, we crew this up with this one. Yep. Um, <laughs> and we attack in with both. Seems right to me. Um, yeah. Okay, that's really good. Uh, they do get the little flash guy. This The Wandering Emperor is so sick because it has flash. This is something we have to note in white from here on out, is the fact that it can do... Like, this is a possibility. That's all fine. Um, to be honest, it doesn't really matter that much. Alright. Um, let's actually otherworldly gaze first. I would love to cast you. Please allow me. Uh, yeah, that's really good. Um, I think we'll just do this. It really doesn't matter too much there. And then this gets another hit in, and then we get to... Yeah, you know, I, so here's the trick, and this is what I don't know. Uh, well, I guess we just try it, right? Can we play the... Can we just take an extra turn here and... Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> I didn't know, one thing I don't know about this deck, and we'll probably learn at some point, I'm not positive if we play that out of the graveyard, if uh, if we at lose at the beginning of the next end step or whatever it is. So we'll, we'll see as we go through, but let's jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two, and this is a keep. It's not a super exciting keep, to be honest, but <clears throat> uh, we do have a number of things we can do here. So, ooh, that makes it a lot better. Okay, now I feel good. Uh, I would love a Mind Link mech. That would be kind of sick, but I think this is going to be good regardless. Now, Prosperous Innkeeper is a bit scary here. Uh, it's just going to be something that we have to kind of fight through. Truthfully, I kind of want to just discard all of these. Um, we need lands, I think, more than most things, so I'm kind of in the camp of let's just go that route, but we'll see. So we can throw this out, and then we actually just get the Magma Opus token here for the treasure, and that'll ramp us into an Efreet on turn three, which I think is good enough. Um, now, we don't really have much else we're doing here, so and we can't really protect it, which is a bit scary, but we'll we'll see what we can do. Cool. So let's go ahead and discard. Get that treasure token. We've got the cave. And I think we do just go for it here. Is that correct? Hmm. Yeah, I think we just do it. If it fails, it fails, but I think this is just like the... It's definitely the, the greedy play. <laughs> it's the high uh, high momentum play, but if they can fight this off somehow, that's a little scary. They do have some snow lands here, so they could have frostbites and things. Oh, it looks like they're going Ren and Seven, though. That's actually fine. Uh, we've got Magma Opus in the graveyard. We can deal with that. Oh, that's really good, too. Um, interesting. Hmm. Okay. Well, this does make it a little bit tricky now because, uh, so we can play land. We could play. Yeah. So I think we just have to go land here and then mine link back. And then we just have to pass. So the problem we have is this does kind of wall us for a turn. However, the fact that we can get in with this next turn, now they are going to have a very powerful creature here, but I'm kind of curious to see if they actually attack in or how this works. Oh, hmm. I think we'll crew this. Okay. Yeah, 
I mean, I think that's just the right play. This obviously is going to just hold back the innkeeper for the most part. It's not really that big of a, a play, but it does kind of help us out. Dead. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not sure why they gave up. That was weird. Let's move on to game three. <laughs> All right, guys, here we are for game number three, and this is not a super exciting hand, to be honest, but we do have the Otherworldly Gaze, uh, as well as some Tezzerets later. Do we want to go for it? I'm going to try it. I don't feel very optimistic about it. I'll be honest. This seems really bad, but we can leave out the Spell Pierce, and then at the end of the turn, if they just don't play anything worthwhile, we can Otherworldly Gaze, and then turn two, we, of course, have that available, so... Let's go ahead and do this. Let's see if we can set up a little bit here. Um, well, we can definitely get rid of that. Uh, I think we want to keep this. So we can discard for the treasure token. Yeah, that seems good. Cool. So we'll go ahead and throw the uh, crucible out there and we'll pass again. Uh, what this allows us to do is either discard to the Magma Opus or Spell Pierce or Otherworldly Gaze. We've got plenty of options here, so I think that this is actually quite good. All right, looks like they're just going to foretell a card. I assume that's like a counter or, you know, some other really scary bad boy. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and Mind Link Mech here. We still get to leave up the Spell Pierce, which is relevant. Ooh, potentially. Very hot coffee. All right. Let's see what they do. They may just leave up mana. It looks like this is just mono blue, uh, which is kind of fascinating. Oh, and it, I think, is. Ooh. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Well, let's do this. <laughs> All right. That was the optimal draw. 100%. Let's crew. Let's attack. <laughs> uh, this is so sick. Um, all right. We'll Seagate Restoration first. So we get to draw a bunch of cards. Now we have no maximum hand size. Then we get to do this again, and we're gonna Magma Opus. Uh, I guess we should have actually Magma Opus first. Technically, that was a mistake um, because we could have drawn more cards, but that's fine. Uh, all right, let's do two and two. We're gonna draw a couple cards and get... <laughs> uh, and look, we have our land drop for the turn. We didn't have that previously. So now we do have Spell Pierce available to us, so if they do have some big play, we can just sweep it. Um, or not sweep it, but counter it. Or if they can remove the mech, maybe we can just counter it. The mech is really... I mean, we've got lethal next turn, if if they do. Excuse me, literally nothing. We also can just Alchemist Gambit. <laughs> That's really good, by the way. This is really, really good. <laughs> Hello, good game. This deck is sick. That's all I'm saying. All right, what we got? Go opponent. Opponent really debating on what to do here. Um, okay, uh, so what we do, I think, is just force them to lock down their mana. So by doing this, they have to tap two or counter it. Uh, either way is fine with me. The the good play is just to pay the two you don't need to counter a counter if you don't have to but yeah they could have just paid two there was literally no reason to do that but anyway um the important thing here is that uh we still have an alchemist gambit <laughs> and they have no mana available anymore um all right so what we'll do is first do this we're going to do this, and we're going to do this. We're going to deal two to them, and we're going to draw two, discard two. So the reason I'm doing this is so we get uh, extra stuff off of the free here. We can just play stuff for free. I'll go ahead and play the Ogre Head, because it doesn't really matter. Let's get in for some damage. Um, we're an Alchemist Gambit. Now we have a free extra turn, and now we just win the game. We did it. We're amazing. Uh, truthfully, we didn't need it, though. We could just deal two and create a treasure. Look at that. That was so efficient. <laughs> that was so sick. Uh, wow. Okay, so we went undefeated, I think. Wow. All right, let's 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 chat about this. Okay, so again, first things first, I just want to say, hello, good game. What a deck, my man. That is a 
sick sick deck uh this is kind of a, a beating I'll, I'll be honest i do expect that this will uh have some repercussions later on in standard because it is a little bit ridiculous that mech with flame painter uh or the afrit flame painter that's a sick little combo i mean it's kind of brokenly sick uh because you can get in on turn four maximum or best best option turn four i believe and get the mech in as a copy of the Afrit and then all of a sudden be able to just like go off. So that's amazing. <laughs> that's so good. Wow. All right, guys. Well, definitely try the deck, I guess. If you hate Is It Turns, I understand this is probably going to trigger you a little bit, but my goodness, what a deck this is. It's absolutely fantastic. A work of art by Hello Good Game. Go check out Hello Good Game, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do encourage you to leave a like, leave a comment, hang out with me. Uh, we've got plenty of gameplay and things going up here on the channel, so I do appreciate all the support. And uh, again, guys, make sure you enter that giveaway we've got going on right now until February 23rd. But guys, until next time, I'll see you later. Thank you so much for watching.